Welcome back to Athletic like Everyday, day number 169. Got a little bit of a different video for you today. This is my morning routine core workout. Uh, this exercise right here is called, well, it's like a modified bird dog. If you were to just hold the arm and leg stationary, then that would be a bird dog. But what I'm doing is this four square drill where I'm lifting my arm and foot in synchronization to create like a square shape. And I'm trying to create as much distance as possible between my arm and foot, and that stretching across the body, so you're doing opposite arm and opposite leg, really helps to activate and stabilize the core, keep the core stable, and you know, have good trunk stability all the while doing this. And then classic side plank, uh, sometimes I do modify this and do a Copenhagen plank, or a bit more of an uh, abductor-focused uh, side plank, where I'll put a band, a mini band around my, my knees, and then sort of do a half plank, and then try and abduct my legs as far apart as possible. Copenhagen plank is when you elevate the top foot, uh, so you're getting a little bit more adductor activation. And then this drill here, it doesn't look like I'm doing much, but what I'm trying to do, this is called a curl up. And what you're trying to do is lift everything from above your hands, so the thoracic spine and the head, off the floor as much as you can, uh, while lifting your elbows as well. And it's very, very difficult because you have to engage your core while keeping, without actually flexing your abs too much. So you can't flex your lower back, you have to keep your lower back in a neutral position while engaging your abs, so it forces the abs to be strong and stable through that range of motion. With regards to the rest of the workout though, uh, I just wanted to get in a bit of a lighter workout because on the program today, um, I was actually scheduled to have a rest day. So this is kind of like what I'll do as my rest day protocol uh, for the lower body. I'll just do um, some slant board squats to get some quad activation, to get some 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 sort of hinging squatting movement pattern focus, and then I did some single legged um, single legged kettlebell RDLs using the ban banister there for support. Uh, so I'm getting that squatting and hinging movement patterns unilaterally and bilaterally. Then tibialis raises, and then just straight leg calf raises, working on extended range of motion, trying to get all the way down in the bottom, and then locking out at the top trying to get as much range of motion through the ankle, dorsi, and plantar flexion as possible. Uh, work through this for four sets of 25 reps uh, on the slant board squats. And then, so in total, it's like a 100 rep workout. Did 100 reps of tibialis raises, 100 reps of calf raises, 100 reps of squats or split squats, and then 100 reps of either kettlebell swings or kettlebell single leg RDLs. This workout probably all in all took me about 30 minutes and it was good to get me going first thing in the morning. I was not feeling motivated at all to do this, but I wanted to get this workout in first thing. And yeah, it felt really good to finish it. Got a nice pump on. Um, my legs felt amazing afterwards. You know, sometimes when you wake up in the morning, your back or your knees can feel really stiff um, from you know, the body's recovery process overnight. And getting moving and going first thing in the morning always makes the rest of the day a lot better for me. Now, with regards to where I'm at with the program, I have two weeks left. And in these last two weeks, I think it is going to be a good idea to retest my vertical jump. Um, and also, I need to, I keep saying this, but I need to go to a court that has a 10-foot rim. Even if it means I have to book out a court, pay, you know, stupid price to book out a court like it is in the UK. And just get some uh, high-quality attempts in with a lob. Because where I'm at right now with my home gym, although I can elevate the rim to 10 feet, I'm not quite, or maybe I am almost at that level where I can do a 10 foot um, dunk, maybe with a really, really good approach, not off the dribble at all. I might be able to get a 10 foot dunk uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, but I think just to massively increase my chances, it's probably best just to go and find a court that is regulation, 10 foot rim, measure it, and then see if I can get a high quality lob. Maybe even, um, you know, ideally a self lob, but, you know, maybe even get a friend to throw, throw a ball up for me. Uh, and see if I can actually get that first dunk on 10 feet, because that will be a real, real big uh, threshold for me, something I've been training for for a long time. And it will just give me a really big sense of achievement, uh, having done something I've been working towards for <laughs> years of my life now. Um, it's definitely a lot more of a mental barrier than a physical barrier, dunking on 10 feet. I feel like um, just from experience, like going over other thresholds, getting on, you know, my first dunk on 9 foot 9, 9 foot 6, and so on, um, the, the the height of the rim, as soon as you can dunk on it, it already seems a lot lower. Like when I'm looking at nine foot nine now and nine foot six, the rim doesn't even seem that high. But I remember quite distinctly in the past looking at those heights of rims and being like, oh yeah, that rim is really high. Uh, I'm never going to be able to dunk on that or it seems really tall. But it just goes to show just how subjective um, external world can be. Just how subjective life can be in general, I suppose, um, when you're comparing it to previous experience. So... 
I think, yeah, as I said, it's a mental barrier for me, dunking on 10 feet, a lot of limiting beliefs with my own vertical jump. And the only way to sort of really overcome those uh, limiting beliefs is just to go out and do it and go out and just give it your best shot, try and attempt it. And the worst that can happen is you can fail. Worst thing that can happen you know, by trying to achieve something that's very important to you is you can fail, but you can't fail if you just keep trying and you keep persisting. Uh, I know I'm going to get this dunk on 10 feet and I'm going to be dunking easily on 10 feet at some point in the future. Um, it's just a case of when, not a case of if, uh, which is why I'm doing all of this training right now. Next week, training might be a little bit interrupted. It might be a little bit less than optimal because um, I'm going to Scotland, up to Aberdeen, to visit one of my friends. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what kind of facilities they have up there, up north. Um, but hey, it'll be fun to travel and take all of you along with me uh, to record my workouts up there. So that is pretty much it for today's workout. Really appreciate the view, and I will catch you guys in the next one.